Hello everyone and welcome back to X-Plane 11 where we're going to take a tour of Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan and uh, we are here with a MiG-29 that is a freeware plane off of the X-Plane website and it is actually from X-Plane 10 it is still usable in this version uh, that's not always the case but it's generally the case uh, though the quality of the aircraft is not quite um, what might be expected for X-Plane 11 these days. But still, uh, there aren't too many aircraft for X-Plane 11 just yet, so a better selection is available for X-Plane 10. Um, it looks pretty good from the outside and has many liveries. Uh, on the inside, however, the virtual cockpit is... Well, at least there is a virtual cockpit, but obviously it's a non-functional one. So, But that's fine for our purposes since we're sightseeing and sort of doing a more cinematic approach to things. So we'll see how it goes. Um, I've uh, taken off in this just once and just gotten a feel for it, but uh, I haven't landed it yet, so we will see. All right, so throttle up. We definitely do not need full thrust, especially if we want to sightsee. So this airport is Craney Airport outside of Baikonur Town. I'm probably going to mispronounce various things during this video. I apologize for that. I'll do my best. But then, uh, by the same token, the, the Russian pronunciation and the Kazakhstan, Kazakhstani pronunciation uh, probably are different anyway. So, ooh. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. So I learned something. The collider isn't quite colliding. Good to know. Anyway, we need some height so that we can... Uh, we don't have the blurriness of the textures. I got the same uh, level quality textures for this area as for Cape Canaveral, but it also depends on how the aerial view was captured, right? This is the town of Baikonur, and it looks just to me like uh, industrial town from the Soviet area kind of thing. You can see a river there and uh, that's just the impression from these blocks. You can sort of see where I would imagine workers were housed. And then we're just going to follow this road here all the way up. That's where that's the main road through everything. This right here is the Cosmodrome gate. This is the entry. Initially, we have some uh, small pads, actually, and uh, tracking facilities. I'm not 100% sure about the significance of these facilities, but I do know there's an oxygen factory labeled on the map right here, so that's an oxygen factory. Liquid oxygen being rather important to these sorts of things. What's immediately interesting about uh, the Baikonur Cosmodrome compared to Cape Canaveral is that it is very spread out, of course. Uh, part of that is obviously due to the luxury of being inland and not an island. On an island you do have to pack things in a bit. Up ahead you see a uh, fork in the road. There's one going to the left, one center, one right. Uh, to the left is the proton area. To the center is the main famous area. And to the right is the Dnieper's, the Zenits, the ICBMs. So that's how it's all arranged. So we'll just go for the center one first and then we'll take a look around at the other ones.
I'll uh, try and slow down here. Uh, what we've got is the core area coming up and some of the more famous buildings. So uh, this area here is the museum area and this is actually the launch viewing site number 18 and uh, this is the most famous pad right here uh, and there's something covering it like a mound covering it but that's that that launch pad is launch pad one that is uh, Gagarin's pad Gagarin's start um, it is also the pad that Sputnik launched from it is where Vostok 1 obviously launched from and so uh, much history very historical beginning of uh, space flight into orbit and everything so yep good place to begin so actually the viewing area is pretty darn close isn't it when you look at that I think over here is the Soyuz Integration Facility and other similar buildings. And I believe this here is the N1 Energia area. Energia. So this is, uh, they built two launch pads, and this is where the N1 would have been launched, and where Energia was launched. This here, I believe, is uh, another Energia brand pad. This is... I think the other one was qualified for Energia, but this one was for Buran as well. And then this runway here was built as the Buran shuttle landing facility. And is of course very useful today. This is Yubelenyi Airport. And of course, uh, the fact that they built it specifically for Buran uh, does not mean that they don't use it anymore. It's very handy for bringing in supplies and such and components for current rockets. So that was a handy development. And then we're going to proceed over to the left wing. But here, right at the edge of our uh, photo scenery, is the proton launch pads and cyclone pads as well. So uh, here are our proton pads. I think the cyclone pads are actually further on in the area I don't have photo scenery for, unfortunately. I did not think that there would still be stuff this far out, so I didn't get the photo scenery for that part. But anyway, proton pads right there. There are a lot of proton pa pads, actually. I think uh, these are proton pads, and then right over here there would have been more proton pads, and then the cyclone pads would have been over there. Okay, now on to the other side. Okay, after a fairly long flight down this 
this side of the facility, we can see Gagarin's start is there. So that's the center road there. And what I might describe as the main facilities here. So the Baikonur facility is so huge that they actually took a separate photo of this area at a different time. It isn't all in one photo block. So we have some launch facilities here. And then uh, over here, around here, are the Dnieper launch silos. Obviously a little bit hard to see them because they are launch silos and therefore uh, not meant to be above ground. Uh, I think uh, that that's a Dnieper launch silo area. I know it's before this fork in the road. Up here is an important launch pad. This area is uh, Soyuz Pad 31 and the Progress launch pad. So this is where they launch Progress from. Okay, we're going a bit fast. So yeah, this is the Progress area, if you will. Neglected that. That's one thing on this fork in the road. And over here... I believe are supposed to be the Zenit pads. So this is the Zenit area. Not so good on the photo scenery here. Let's get some more height. And we continue following this road out because there is still the ICBM silos for the R-16 and R-36. So over here is the R-16 and R-36 ICBM silo area. Again, they are silos, so we're not going to be able to see too much of it. But basically there's like one there. And then we run out of photo scenery, so we might as well turn around. Oop, stalling there. All right, so let's take a look back at the area and you can see just a huge long road. That's a different time of year, I think, is what went on there. And we can see little blocks of photos taken at different times of year as well. But yeah, we can't even see the rest of the facility very well from this distance. But we're gonna land at uh, Baran shuttle landing facility. We take a look at the map. You can sort of see the path I've taken. That's the Baikonur Airport, uh, UAOL. So Baikonur Airport and then we sort of took a loop-the-loop -loop around Gagarin's start. We went up here. This is the Baran shuttle landing facility and here we took a loop the loop around the proton area came back across down the road and then up the other road so that's road one road two road three the right wing road and then uh, here is where the progress launch pad was 
And then down here we had the um, Zenit pad and over here is the ICBM silos. Ignore the space shuttle coming in there. Well, I mean, don't ignore it. Maybe it's a Buran, but I don't. Uh, I don't have a Buran. If if I could have, uh oh. I exceeded G frame. I mean, G limit for the airframe. No, I want to continue. Why? Well, I can't. Come on. I. You're not gonna let me. Ah. Here, I was just trying to show people a map. Dang it. Yeah, look at how different it looks. I, I guess this is the winter texture or something. Can't tell though for sure. Maybe they just derped on the imagery. Anyway, it looks like I'm not going to be landing this today. But I think you got a sense of the area. And I guess it's a good time to point out how crashes work in X-Plane 11. They're sort of floppy. And you do tend to end up on your back. I've done this a few times, you could tell. Um, uh, usually when looking at the map, actually. But uh, a tire blown structure over G. Yeah, uh, in Flight Sim 10, you usually had a little explosion. Here, no explosion. You tend to uh, do a belly flop or something. All right, well, uh, not the best ending to this video, but sort of appropriate and it is my way I don't uh, hide my failures I, I'm not gonna re-record this uh, this is how it's gonna be if I fail you will know about it alright so here we are alright on that ignominious note I'll say thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed this video if you did enjoy this video please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time